Hello, this is Jason. Back with another walk and talk with Jason. You hear the little ding dong. That's my ding dong, you ding dong. <laughs> uh, so, I got my full backpack on. Camera strapped to the backpack. And this will be, this will be the backpack that I'm wearing when I'm actually traveling. So this little mount that I got is very convenient for when I'm traveling. It's probably the best mounting option that I got because it's pretty stable. It's not like the other little clip that I got that can kind of do a little flippy floppy, flippy floppy. And I was looking at the, uh, footage from yesterday when I had my little fanny pack uh, strapped around my waist and it seemed like there was a lot of instances where it was getting jarred and because it's on my hip and it's swinging like forwards and backwards it's not it's not the best it wasn't the best view it's too low it was an experiment though I had to experiment don't, don't, don't be mad at me for experimenting. <clears throat> but I'm wearing my full size backpack today because I've got the shoes that I was, the sandals, the Birkenstocks. They're in a big, like a shoe box. And that's too big to fit in any of my sling bags or even my little 15 liter day bag I had to break out the big boy the 40 liter this will be my main luggage backpack and it's got like nice supports to hold a lot of weight even though my I'm going to be offloading a lot of the weight into a Scotty vest when I'm traveling in between countries in Southeast Asia. So I've got all kinds of bags. Plus I have two other bags that hello. I got two other bags that I used before I got this one. <laughs> and I just got, I, oh, I got another bag today. I'm a, what is my deal? I'm a bag addict. I'm just, my, <laughs> my friend from high school, Corey, he uh, once called me the ultimate consumer. It's like, you are the ultimate consumer because <laughs> of all the I was always buying and selling I'm the I'm very into free market capitalism <laughs> uh, although I do like some socialist ideas for common public goods I'm a much very much a supporter free market capitalism. I love buying and selling in the open market and mostly eBay market these days. <laughs> but I was, I was going to say I already had these uh, e-bags. I'll probably be selling those on eBay. E-bags. Those were my first uh, venture into getting rid of like wheeled carry-on luggage and just getting a backpack to carry everything in <clears throat> and I've been doing that since probably uh, 2000 10 2010 if I had to guess I have to go look back at when I first got my that first e-bag to see when that was. Hello. Man, these high school kids are really friendly, aren't they? 
<laughs> uh, you're like damn vlogger <laughs> look at this there's the google fiber get that stuff run and get that to my house get that to my house hello, hello. <laughs> see none of, none of the kids said hello but the older lady with a jacket on her head said hello thank you old lady with the jacket on your head for being kind to me the first person that said hello to me <laughs> all day <laughs> uh, so yeah, and I have two of those e-bags so I used the first one for like five years and then I got a new one probably use that one for about five years and then got this new Osprey and this is the Osprey Far Far Point 55 liter and it's only 55 liter when combined with the 15 liter day bag this backpack's only 40 liters and if I had to do it again I would get the Far Point 40 liter because that one has like a, a laptop compartment in it and it has some extra pockets and stuff where it's like an all-in-one bag where this one is just meant for clothes it's a little warm out today 88 88 degrees and with all the other bags that I got, I probably won't even, I don't even know if I'm going to keep the 15 liter day bag. Because I'll probably be carrying everything in my Scotty vest. But that's still to be de determined. You know, I have high hopes when I order something. I have all these high hopes of how life is going to be once this new product arrives. It makes my life so much better no matter what it is. I thought that about the Birkenstocks. Never had Birkenstocks before, but I heard about people just loving the Birkenstocks and they mold your feet and the cork just wraps your feet in pleasure and bliss. <laughs> and then I get the pair, walk a mile in it, and it about saws my toe off. So sometimes, Reality does not match expectations. Very often. Very often, reality does not match expectations. Which is a big reason why I have this exploratory Bangkok trip coming up in December. Because I have all of these uh, expectations of how I imagine Bangkok to be and just Thailand in general but I've, I've watched a lot of video I I've watched thousands at least over a thousand videos on Thailand and Bangkok so I'm pretty well versed in what is being said about it but I'm also aware that they have very strict defamation laws in Thailand to where you're not allowed to defame, which is pretty much say anything negative <laughs> about Thailand. And, I, and I, I know that applies to like businesses. Like if you go on to uh, like leave a Google review or leave like a TripAdvisor review of a hotel and say this place was a dump there's cockroaches everywhere the water didn't work it was you know just all truthful things everything you say about it is actually true they can sue you you can actually it's actually a criminal offense I believe I think you could probably do jail time maybe get deported <laughs> like I don't know if they would actually jail 
a foreigner over that, but you might get deported. You, they might not you let, let you come back into Thailand for defaming a, a business, even if everything that you said is true. So <clears throat> there's a lot of things in Thailand where there's a lot more freedom than we have in America, but there's things like that where there's a little less freedom than what we got in the freedom of speech area. You're not allowed to say certain things. Another big one is you're not allowed to uh, say anything bad about the king. So it is a kingdom, the kingdom of Thailand. It's still a, a monarchy, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, the king doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Me just saying that in Thailand would probably not be uh, allowed. <clears throat> I won't be saying anything like that while I'm in Thailand. But it's kind of like the uh, the UK, how they have, you know, there's a king of England. But he's just kind of like a figurehead. But the king of Thailand, I believe, is the wealthiest monarch in the world. He's worth like... $50 billion, super rich, super rich. <clears throat> See if I can get across the street without dying. <sighs> and my pants falling down because I got some, got some uh, juice. This is uh, Gatorade Zero that I mixed up myself and put in a Snapple bottle. In case you're wondering what blue Snapple drink I was drinking. Ah, oh, yeah, nice. Got a little shade. So, yeah. Don't talk ill of the, the king. Uh. So... Yeah, that's what the exploratory trip for a month in December is all about. Go see if expectations align with reality. See what I really think of it. And I'm going there to not be like a tourist. Like, I really don't care about going to see the Grand Palace or going to tour temples or floating markets. All the touristy stuff. I don't really care about that. I want to go over there, and that's why I'm not staying in a hotel or a resort. It's not. I'm not going for, like, vacation mode. I'm going to pretend like I live there mode. <laughs> so that's why I'm staying in an Airbnb in a condo that I could actually rent. And it's a condo that I am interested in renting. I'm gonna go see if it is, you know, if I really would like to stay there because it's in a very, very busy area, Bangkok, right where the BTS and the MRT meet on uh, Sukhumvit and Asok, the Asok BTS stop. All right, well, I gotta go into the post office here. I'm not going to talk to you guys for a second. Let's see. Oh my God, it feels so good in here. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> it's October. I mean, right? October. Oh, this is like Texas. Yep. <laughs> so I should go to there. Well, I'm from Ohio. It's getting cool up there. Oh. <laughs> I'm going there for Thanksgiving. <sighs> yeah. We had we had a, a three or four cool days there, like 70 <laughs> degrees, and that's all you get. I don't see so much. It wasn't going to happen. Yeah. <sighs> all right. Mission accomplished. Oh, wow.
Have a nice day. You too. I don't even know if this camera is pointing the right way. Let's assume it is. Kind of looks like it's pointing up at the sky. There. That's better. All right. Whew. Well, that's a nice lady. It's, it seems like it's more and more rare that I come across people that actually want to have a conversation. Everyone just seems so heads down, keep to themselves, don't even acknowledge anyone else exists. <laughs> uh, that's another thing that I've heard about Thailand and Thai people in general, that they're very friendly. And it's, uh, I don't know. We'll see. One thing I want to try to do is just go, like, interview random people in, in the malls. <laughs> There's actually some guy I see it that does that. I want to do that, too. We'll see if I have the the guts to do it. I think it's kind of different. I, I think it will be. Just being over there, like, just being a foreigner, I can kind of get away with doing things that are kind of out of the ordinary because everyone's like, oh, he's a foreigner. This is, this is just what they do in America. <laughs> They walk around and interview everyone in the mall. So <laughs> maybe it'll, it won't be so awkward. <clears throat> interview some Thai people or just foreigner people. Or just try to try to get some girls' phone numbers. Well, not phone numbers. Everyone uses like. What do they use over there? Line. There's an app called Line, which is kind of like WhatsApp. Everyone uses Line. Like, like, can I get your Line ID? They, they have like alternatives to everything. They do use Instagram. So there's not an alternative for Instagram there. They use Instagram and Facebook. But instead of Uber, they use Grab grab and bolt so instead of uber lift they have grab and bolt <clears throat> and then grab is just like uh uber and uber eats all rolled into one you can order food and they'll deliver it right to your condo but instead of it costing 30 dollars <laughs> for a meal with a 10 dollar expectation to tip it's like two or three dollars. And if you tip 50 cents, they'd be super happy because most people don't tip at all. There's really no expectations of tipping from what I've heard. And it just sounds nice. Sounds very nice. But I'm really supposed to be downsizing and I've gone on the spending spree buying all these different clothes under my rationale of getting some higher quality products. If I'm only gonna have a few products, then have a few higher quality products. That's my reasoning. I don't know if that pans out. I think it does. Makes sense to me. <laughs> uh, 
and there's there's no way I'm going to be able to sell all my like stuff that I already have like socks I have like 30 pairs of Duluth trading seven year performance socks that cost $21 a piece think anyone will buy those for like nine bucks a pair <laughs> got some socks size large will fit size 9 through 12 shoe hit me up if you're in the market for some used socks they're, they're, uh, they're in really good shape like they say they're 7 year socks and I've probably only had them for 2 or 3 so I mean there's not even half the life's not even out of all the socks yet <laughs> oh my god we almost witnessed the accident almost oh. I think crossing on the other side happens faster because you have to wait for the people to turn left here now let's see if this guy tries to run me over no thank you thank you for not trying to run me over Sweat my eyes. It's a hot day. The heat has come back. Even with my sweatband and hat on. And I wear my sweatband like all the way down to my eyeballs. My magnetic watch keeps catching on my magnetic microphone clip. Oh, thank you, kind sir. So, in other news, talked about Bangkok. Got to talk about, guess what? What else do I like to talk about every day? Bitcoin. So, I've been thinking of reallocating my IRA Bitcoin holdings from like in, a, in an IRA you can't just buy pure Bitcoin at least not in most IRAs there probably are some IRAs where you can do that on some uh, pure crypto exchanges but I don't really want to mess with pure crypto exchanges that's how you avoid uh, FTX scenarios. Like I'm, most of my stuff's on Robinhood right now because I was on Fidelity and Robinhood had a thing, like right now they have a thing where if you transfer an IRA to Robinhood, they'll give you a 3% bump or boost 3% <laughs> match basically for whatever you transfer over and I don't know if I got 3% when I did it or 1 it might be this 3% thing might actually be just new but if you transfer your IRA you know if you have $100,000 transferred over to Robinhood and you have to actually do the transfer of your assets. You can't like cash out your IRA and then transfer the money over and, and reinvest it. You have to actually transfer your holdings, which could be cash holdings, I guess, but you just have to transfer the whole IRA. <clears throat> so if you had a hundred thousand bucks, they'll give you 3000 bucks just for transferring it over. But the catch is, I think you have to keep it, the, keep it with Robin Hood for like three years. So they'll give you the money right away. They'll deposit the 3000 But if you take the money out within three years, they'll take the match away. And I don't know if some of it vests each year or how it exactly works, but 
generally you have to keep it there I think three years <laughs> look into the details of it but that's that's why I transferred it over to Robin Hood and at the time for my regular brokerage account uh, Robin Hood was the cheapest place to buy Bitcoin <coughs> at the time where it was like zero between 0.35% to 0.45%. It actually fluctuates based on the demand of Bitcoin at the moment. But it's, from when I've seen it, it's always been under a half a percent. And that's a, what do they call that? Uh, I forget the term of it, but, but Fidelity charges 1% and almost every other place was charging 1%. So if you bought $100,000 of Bitcoin, they would take a thousand bucks. But on Robinhood, if you do 100,000 of Bitcoin, they'll take 350 bucks. So much better deal. But the best deal, which I've mentioned multiple times before, is to set up dollar cost averaging on Strike, which is just an app on your phone. Download the Strike app. And if you do dollar cost averaging, which is just set up a, a reoccurring buy, either every day, every week, every month, and then after the first week, so if you set up weekly after the first, the first buy, you'd pay their fee, which is somewhere around 1%, it's like 0.95%. <clears throat> but after that first one, it's free. So every subsequent buy every week, if you're doing $1,000 every week, you just get $1,000 worth of Bitcoin every week with no, not taking any fees. So that's what I've been doing for the last few months. I think, I think they just came out with that like in June or July. That's how long I've been doing it. And that's the best deal in Bitcoin right now. But what I was talking about with my IRAs, so my IRAs I have bought uh, the Fidelity Bitcoin ETF, FBTC. And when you buy that, there's no fee. You could just buy it, but there's an expense ratio which means like every year they take a percentage of it and i forget what it is it's like 0.3 percent so again if you had a hundred thousand dollars they'd be taking uh three hundred dollars every year out of your hundred thousand it's not huge but i mean it is an expense and it does whittle away at your holdings so what I was thinking of is taking that money and investing it into MicroStrategy, which is um, a company that just buys Bitcoin. And it, it's kind of a leveraged Bitcoin play to where like every share, well, it's like 1.5 times the value, whatever money you're putting in, you're getting like 1.5 times that in Bitcoin. So it's kind of leveraged. <clears throat> and there's no expense ratio, but it's more volatile. But like in the past month, it's gone up 60, 70% where Bitcoin has gone up like 10, 15%. So I think over time you get bigger, bigger gains. And Michael Saylor is the CEO of that company. He's like the biggest Bitcoin uh, cheerleader. <laughs> and the company that MicroStrategy has hundreds of thousands of Bitcoins and he says he's never gonna sell them. And ding dong, and he's just gonna use the, the Bitcoin that he has. He's eventually gonna be like loaning it out in the future like a Bitcoin bank. So he's got, and make Bitcoin related products. So 
So that's what I've been thinking about. <sighs> Selling my Fidelity Bitcoin ETF in my IRA, in my Roth IRA and my traditional IRA and buying MicroStrategy. But I'd probably wait until MicroStrategy takes a dip. I'm gonna buy the dip. Because if you look at the cycle over like year to date, and year to date they're up like 200%, it's ridiculous. Where year to date of Bitcoin, it's like up 60% maybe. So MicroStrategy is definitely outperforming Bitcoin. And just buy it, hold it in my IRA, especially the Roth where all the capital appreciation, capital gains, I won't have to pay any capital gains on those earnings in a Roth IRA. Magically, magic. And then just put $7,000 or whatever the limit is for Roth IRA in every year, keep growing that. And then you can start taking that out when you're 59 and a half. So that's what I was thinking about. This was a short, short vlog today compared to my hour long walks. That was just a quick trip to the uh, post office returns. So thanks for hanging out with me and let me know if you've ever heard of MicroStrategy in the comments. And that's all I got for now. <laughs> Talk to you later. Take it easy.